All right guys, so today I'm gonna to be installing this, my DSP-5, or also known as an LSP-5 uh, switch. It's a five position switch, and the LSP-5 stands for LML Switchable Power 5 Position. So I'm gonna be installing this somewhere in my cab, under my dash, so that I can switch my tunes on the fly, because since I got this truck for the last two years, if I ever wanted to switch a tune, you know, I had to stop, turn off the truck, unplug my CTS-2, plug in the auto cal and then do a calibrated flash on whatever tune I was going to put it in and then plug the thing back in the CTS2 and then go through you know what make it is and all that and it just it was really a pain in the ass and I've decided now I'm doing all these other modifications to my truck now is a good time since I've just updated my tunes um, because I'm also getting the new tunes I just got are from my built transmission which you know my dyno that I just got done uh, last week on this truck with the stock LML transmission tunes netted about 480 horse and about 880 foot-pounds of torque at the rear wheels. I'm hoping that the built transmission gets me about 520 and close to a thousand at the rear wheels. But we'll see because I am lifting the truck and putting 411 gears in it and uh, 35 inch tires. So all of that's taken into account with the new tunes. But today we're going to go ahead and install this switch. And so far I haven't really seen any good spots for it, but we're going to see what we can find. All right. So here is the LSP5 switch as I received it from Duramax Tuner. It comes in this little plastic bag with just a little green um, kind of instruction sheet. It's not very specific on what to do because they include their instruction manual online with pictures. So it is uh, it is pretty detailed. Um, this shows you obviously it's for the 11 to 12 and then the 12 and a half to 16 are two different pin locations and then it gives you which tools you're going to need. So I need to get my uh, my tools out but basically as you flip through it it gives you everything you need to know with pictures. It shows you where your ECM is. It's got three harnesses on it. Which harness to pick. Um, and then, let me see if I get my thumb wet here. I flip this page. And then as you go through how to open up the, the connector and um, how you need to insert the pins. And then it shows you your pin locations. So 11 to 12s are 11 and 48 pin location. And then my truck being a 16, the last of the LMLs, I'm going to be pins 46 and 27. And then doesn't show you, there's nothing in here about where to, to mount the actual switch. The last picture is just how to put the harness back together. So <clears throat> I'm going to have to find a suitable location for this deal. Alright, so I don't actually have a coat hanger, one of the cheap ones with just the metal and the cardboard. So. I took one of the plastic coat hangers and I took this metal rod out of it and it's only about a foot long it's not long enough and I stuck it through the grommet so what I did was I just put a bunch of zip ties together and I'm gonna try and shove these through and use that to pull the wire through into the engine compartment take that out and then I'll try and shove this in and I'll show you what I got alright so I finally got the thing through there's the metal rod and then I just um, taped it to some dip, zip ties since I didn't have a coat hanger and there's the zip ties going through so I'm just gonna tape up the wires uh, these blue and white wires right to that I'm gonna cut the metal thing off and just do it right to the zip tie because it's more flexible and then I'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and pull it back through yeah I've got the wires here um, taped up to the zip tie and hopefully I'll be able to pull it through without breaking anything um, actually, I'm going to go get my wife and see if she can pull them back. All right, so the old zip ties broke after I got the, the wires taped up. I started to pull them through the grommet, and they just snapped. So I took this uh, string out of my string trimmer. I'm going to try that. All right, as you can see, I've now got the wires through, thanks to the string from the string trimmer that was left over when I bought the house. So now that I've got them through into the engine compartment, I need to route them down here to where the ECM is, which is under this plastic thing, and somehow get the cover off and put the pins in. Okay, now that I've got the wires through in here, I found the ECM, which is 
uh, this deal right here and I took this little thing off there's just a couple of push pins one here one here and one on the side that I pushed out with my left hand you can see there's three harnesses there's one two three the one nearest the firewall is the one that you're gonna want to access and as it says here remove the ECM shield which is this thing which I've already done um, there are three connectors wired on the connector close to the firewall connector has a red tab and needs to be slid out this is a locking mechanism use a small flathead screwdriver or right handle pick to slide the locking mock to slide the locking mechanism out so you need to pull it towards you push the tab on the top of the ECM connector in figure seven so this is six and seven So you gotta push that thing down and then somehow push the black thing down and then pull the lever up. Alright, so it was a pain in the ass and you can see I broke the red tab but I was able to pull it up with a pick and then push the tab in and disconnect this thing from the ECM. Now I'm gonna have to fish out these wires from underneath the power steering cables or uh, lines so that I can get access to it. Okay, as shown here in figure 9, you need to pull the harness out from underneath the power steering line, which I basically just reached down here by the intercooler tube and grabbed it with my right hand and ripped it up. So here it is. You want to go ahead and cut that zip tie so you can pop this black cover off and you can access the back of this gray thing. So I'll use my side cutters to cut that zip tie. Alright, so here's the cover. It's just these two tabs here. After you cut the zip tie, you're able to just pop those off and you can access the back of this thing. Now you have to get this gray thing off and you got to use an angled pick or small flathead screwdriver to carefully pop that off without breaking it so you can get access to the pins. Okay, as shown here in figure 11, you want to pry that gray cover off. There's the gray cover. There's the exposed pins and I was able to get it off with a little right uh, angled pick. So now that you see the pins, you need to access holes 27 and 46. So 2012 and a half and up to 2016, pinhole 27 and 46. All right, so I found this little diagram of what the harness looks like, but we're still doing 27 and 46. I thought there would be no uh, pins in those holes, but there are. So if you count, I was wrong. If you count from the bottom left is one, and then you come back, so that's 16 each row on the bottom. So 16. The second row is 17. So what we'll want to do is count over. So 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. So this fourth one here, we got to get out. This is 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44. 45, 46. So we have to remove two pins to get to where we're going. So you want to use a little pick and then get down there and there's a little tab and you can, I'm going to need both hands but I'm just showing you. You push down here with the angle pick on 27 and same thing on 46 and you should be able to get them out. Alright so after a lot of pulling and prodding and poking I got 27. You see that brown wire it's sticking out with kind of a stripe on the side. I've got it halfway out and I'm going to put the new uh, the new uh, the new pin in there as soon as I get disconnected and then I'm going to work on getting 46 out. So basically I got one wire in but it won't clip in. Pulled it out, put the other wire in and still the pin still won't clip in so I don't know what the hell is wrong. I'm going to keep trying. Alright so the cover's back on, the switch is in. I broke both of the plastic things that hold the pins in although I did get the pins in and I did test the switch. I still need to get all the sheathing over the wire there, but and I still need to drill the hole, but I have something to do right now. I'll show you how to test the switch. Where are my keys? So it is working. I know the pins are working. You turn the thing on. Here's what you do. There's a button on the back here. Little button. Hit that, a little light comes on. And you rotate through the pit, uh, the numbers, uh, one to five, and it'll get dimmer as you go, like this.
right guys so when I left off in this video I actually had just gotten the wires into the engine compartment and hooked up to the ECM and everything what happened was I ended up pushing the old pins out that were in the pin positions 26 and or 27 and 46 and I broke the little plastic retainers so the pins weren't really staying in but I, I held them in while I put the, the thing back on the ECM and it seems to be working as I showed you in the uh, test where I tested the switch so now I'm going to get this thing drilled and mounted into the, the dash. I think I'm going to do this spot right over here. So we'll see. I think it's a 3 8 bit. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. i got my drill. This is a 3 8 drill bit. That's the size you need to drill um, for the switch to go through the panel. And I decided I'm just going to put it in this, in this kick, in this removable panel here with the with the deal here so I'm gonna put it like right here in the corner so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some blue tape put it there and then I'm gonna put the little circle thing up and I'm gonna mark the center I'm gonna take this thing off and I'm gonna drill it so basically it'll be like this so that's a little thing it's gonna go like right there basically if you can see that Okay guys, there you go. Got the switch installed. Um, got the knob on that was a little tight. I had to use a Dremel actually to kind of round out the hole a little bit just to get it to go over the uh, the actual switch knob. Um, I'm going to go ahead and zip tie the wires that are behind the kick panel. Um, and it's uh, ready to go. I've already tested it. Seems to work. I'll load the tunes once I get the new tires on after it gets back from the shop this week but uh, overall I think it's in a good position I should be able to reach it nice and easy and uh, no problems pretty easy just took me a little little bit longer than I thought it would take but um, I think it looks pretty good anyway I'll uh, show you what uh, what it does after I get the uh, the new tunes installed and we'll see if uh, if it's working thanks for watching